morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and our toll free number, 800 951 Legal, lawful, constitutional tender. Talking about gold and silver, it is what we do, and we do it better than anyone. Uh, the website at allamericangold.com. Make it part of your daily routine. I got so many things to talk about. It, it, it's all coming so fast. Uh, obviously, the day after uh, the markets were closed yesterday for uh, George Bush Sr.'s memorial, I did find out. Apparently, we do it for everybody. So uh, I was confused because I didn't remember them closing the markets for for Ford. But uh, I guess what happened was Ford uh, passed at the end of December, and they decided that they couldn't close the market. Uh, It would have been the last Friday of the year, and they said that that was – that wasn't going to work, and so what they did was they added an extra day after New Year's. So uh, you, you had the markets close New Year's Day and, I guess, January the 2nd. It's probably why I didn't remember it. Uh, but I guess they do that when all presidents pass. They shut the markets. Uh, the Dow was down, seven. well, really, 800 points on Tuesday. It's down 600 more points today. I don't think it's going to be done. Uh, heavy, heavy attention on crude oil. We got a bevy of economic data points. We'll try to get to all of those as well. Uh, but on, on business side, yesterday I told you we did a show, a major change in cash handling procedures. Uh, we, we have a big show. We're planning a a. Uh, over the over the holiday, so over Christmas and New Year's, uh, we are going to be running uh, a lengthy program, multiple hours on the escalation on the war on cash. Uh, we we have uh, been. I don't want to. You know what? I'll, I'll say it the way I feel. We have been warned to stop taking cash that's how i feel about it uh the bank oh you know they they won't they won't go that far but that's what's happened i will tell you this uh we are still accepting cash we will do so uh at least through the rest of this year uh we have me i have meetings scheduled with the bank uh right before christmas and then i'll meet uh with jason and brian and we'll have an announcement uh, about how we're going to be handling cash in the future. But, but again, remember what I told you yesterday. Maybe five years, maybe ten if we're lucky, uh, and, and and you're going to see a new currency. That's just how it. it this is how it works. Uh, they'll 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 say it's going to. They'll, they'll make the claim that it's going to save us. Uh, the yield curve inversion uh, got stronger today. The 10-year note now down to 285. So we are less than, and I, uh, the last I saw, the 10-year was 285. The two-year, which is the one we're really watching, is will the two-year yield raise above the 10-year yield? It's happened seven times. Every single time meant recession and if if it happens yeah i'll tell you right now it'll be an eighth time and right now the last i saw the two-year note was 278 the 10 year at 285 uh so you can tell a very we're right on the precipice here of that happening uh so we we, we have to keep, keep an eye on all of those things uh silver big announcement there As of today, we can accept orders for 2018 Silver Eagles and for 2019 
Silver Eagles. If you want 2019, here's something that's different. No premium this year. Oh, I shouldn't. Let me let me rephrase that. That <laughs> calls out. No increased premium. In other words, the 2018s and the 2019s will cost the same. Usually they bump you like 50 cents an ounce to pre-order. If you want 2019, second week of January is when they will hit the bullion bank, and then they'll ship out to us and or to you. Uh, So figure no later than the third week of January, they'll be in your hands. Uh, So same price. 2018 back dates, if there was any, and there, right now there isn't, but if there was, everything's the same price. Uh, so that means rolls of U.S. Silver Eagles, uh, 2018, 2019, any other year in between, 360 a roll, $9,000 if you would like a case of Silver Eagles, 800 951 Zero five nine two. That is our toll free number. And then, of course, the biggest news: I will be in Colorado Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, potentially even Saturday. So, if you want to come by, say hello. You want to uh, place orders. You want to do business. I'll tell you right now. You want to get that cash business done. Do it now. Do it while we're up there. Uh, 800-951-0592. Uh, if you want to meet with me personally, call us ahead of time. Let's set something up. Uh, but I'll be up in Colorado all next week. Take the radio news hour. We'll be back after the break. 800-951-0592. Uh, Dow, 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 700. Uh, gold is up six twelve hundred forty three dollars uh, silver uh, fighting all the way back now. Just just below unchanged on U.S. silver this morning, uh, fourteen forty two. Uh, again, the Dow down seven hundred more points. That means fifteen hundred points now uh, in the last two trading days. I'm going to give you a little heads up. Watch crude oil. Crude oil right now down about two dollars a barrel, uh, just above uh, fifty dollars, fifty dollars seventy-five to fifty dollars eighty cents right now. Uh, if crude breaks below fifty, the chance of us entering recession will jump significantly. Uh, already, crude all the way down here uh, is going to take a big chunk out of GDP. And I and I do my best to try to tell you, you know, last year, you know, we had the you know, the, those two good quarters. Crude oil, you know, crude oil it, listen, it, it went from what 20 to, to 70, 20 to almost 80 in defense spending, right? Those were the well, government spending, defense being the big, uh, big piece of that. Uh, but now uh, p- people are talking about uh, there won't be investing in more drilling uh, if crude oil is below fifty dollars a barrel. And today, OPEC met. They were supposed to announce a production cut. Then they got worried overnight that there was it was going to be smaller. They were expecting a cut of one point five million barrels. Then this morning they said it may only be a million or less. The meeting has just ended. No cut. No agreement. And I get, listen, everybody's in the same boat. Every country's in the same boat. And this is, like I said, we're seeing this ramping up of a, the attack on cash all over the world. Listen, everybody is getting ready for the reset that's coming. They can't afford to cut production. Everybody's in the same boat, right? Everybody needs the money. The other big news was the arrest of Chinese largest, I I believe they're the largest, they're actually privately held, largest telecom company, uh, 
how we or how we how we are you know my Chinese isn't that good. Uh, their CEO or CFO, excuse me, got arrested in Canada on behalf of the United States. In other words, we asked the Canadian authorities. Apparently, she was changing planes in Canada. Right? Obviously, didn't want to be here in the U.S. Change planes in Canada. They've arrested her, and are uh, she's supposed to be extradited to the United States. And they're saying that the company violated Iranian sanctions. Uh, and this has got everybody pretty pretty upset about what may happen. Uh, you know that trade deal again. Uh, I I won't even talk about that. But has now got everybody worried the Chinese are demanding her return. Uh, just to give you a an example, Cisco, Motorola, companies of that nature filed uh, lawsuits against them for uh, theft and stealing of trade secrets. Uh, they, they are currently considered the best in class, if you will, when it comes to telecom network technology. More highly thought of than companies like Nokia and Ericsson, and uh, they're all over the world. Apparently, the United States banned U.S. businesses from doing business with them. This is the company uh, that was involved. Do you remember that story that broke that they may have been putting uh, little back doors into microchips? Uh, this is them. Uh, and they've been arrested. She was arrested uh, on apparently uh, in Canada on behalf of the, on the request of the United States. And uh, it's got everybody upset. And I'm going to tell you right now, again, does it matter? Because here, here is the way this is really going to break down. China will not relent. I've been saying it. I've been consistent with it for the entire year. They are not going to relent. They will do what they have to do. If they need to steal it, they will. And we need to accept that and say, you know what, then this is how it's got to be. Unfortunately, that means that Wall Street probably uh, got to fall by half. Right back now, you know, there's like 12000 Because we're doing business with these companies, is, this is just what's going to happen. And, and, and should this person have been arrested? Probably absolutely. What will come of it, we'll wait and see. But this is what has uh, the markets on edge. So we've got so many signs now, right, the yield curve inversion. We already know the two-year and the three-year notes now yielding more than the fives, almost yielding more now than the sevens, gaining ground on the ten. That's the big one. And I, and I keep hearing, I, I love when I hear, the, oh, well, it's going to be different this time. It's not going to be. Uh, I think uh, we've seen the peak. Back when I told you, think about it, what did I tell you? What was it? Six, eight weeks ago, ten weeks ago? Classic signs of the top. They're all here. Uh, today, I want to go through uh, a quick look at a lot of data came out today. First was jobless claims stayed elevated okay back again second week in a row above 230 and remember obviously they're not jobless claims don't mean what they used to the fact that they're this high is worrisome then we had adp jobs remember it's the first Friday, first week of the month tomorrow we're going to get the government jobs number that one missed bad they're expecting a number well above 200,000. Uh, came in about, I think it was like 170-something, uh, which does not bode well for tomorrow's report. Then we had some soft data. ISM manufacturing down. 
Matter of fact, thir- third out of three out of the last four months. Non manufacturing, though, was a good number. Right? They're still, no, it's going to be okay. I do- it doesn't appear to be trade deficit. It's another one. This is another one that hurts GDP. Matter of fact, right now, uh, they haven't come out with the new number yet. Uh, hopefully, they will before the show's over. Right now, the Atlanta Fed has GDP at 2.8% for the fourth quarter, and you know they're always high. This is going to get tough, but the trade deficit hit the largest levels in over 10 years again. Second straight month in a row. New all-time record high trade deficit with the Chinese. And remember what that means. That's money leaving the United States. And then we had another update this time last week. I think it was uh, was it Morgan Stanley had a new dollar forecast this morning. J.P. Morgan now coming out with a new dollar forecast and a brand new forecast on gold consumption. We'll get to that one uh, after the break because I want to spend some time on it. Uh, Right now, the Dow now down uh, 700 points and counting some other news that, again, I know they want to blame the trade deficit thing. Oh, it's the trade thing. It's not. But you can blame that. It doesn't help. Right? We can agree on that. It doesn't help. The economy is robust, so they tell us. The unemployment rate is sitting at 3.7%, allegedly. Right? Again, remember. They have six different unemployment reports. The one they use, the one that's the lowest. If you went back to when Ronald Reagan was president, you go back to when George Bush Sr. was president. The unemployment rate wouldn't be 3.7. It wouldn't be 4.7. It wouldn't be 5.7 or 6.7. The lowest mark, they say, in nearly half a century. Interest rates are still, by every perspective, historically low. So why is credit card delinquency? Remember, I've been telling you. Credit card delinquencies spiking again. Application rejection. This is new. Right? The banks are now back to rejecting uh, applications, and involuntary account closures are now all on the upswing, according to the data released by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. It said that its credit access survey, this is a quarterly report, okay, So here's the Fed government. Now, remember, they're coming out on TV telling you it's great, the economy's so strong, and and the gradual increase in interest rates. Yet their own data saying, hey, we got a problem. Several alarming, alarming trends are starting to emerge in the credit card issuers. Now, remember, I think I told you two weeks ago, the non-top 100 banks all got credit card problems. It was only a matter of time before it spread to everything else. Rejection of credit card application. 21%. You know what it was last year? 14. The 30 Three percent increase in rejection. The uh, rejection rate for increasing credit limits, 32%. A year ago, it was 25%. And then, of course, the uh, 
involuntary shutdown of people's credit. Right? The bank just saying, you know what? I know you, we said you could have it, but now nah, nah, we're not going to do it now. That jumped 20% from a year ago. In a separate report uh, last month, they had a household debt and credit survey that found similar results. They also said the reason for the declines credit worthiness, size of current credit card balances, and then, of course, the worst one, the increase in delinquencies amongst high credit score brackets. In other words, it's not just a subprime problem. (laughs) Right? That's what they always, oh, it's just a subprime problem. Get ready or you don't. I don't care. You know what's coming. Understand that the deficit is $22 trillion. It's going to rise by essentially, and I don't care, big number, fake number, actually rise $2 trillion a year. And within the next two to three years, it's going to be $3 trillion. And the next five to six Four trillion dollars a year, and that's just because I know how to do math. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily commentary continuing the conservative pro-family legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now, here's the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. Last year, Hans von Spakovsky released a report for the Heritage Foundation in which he concluded that early voting can increase the cost of campaigns and actually decrease overall election turnout. How, you ask? Early voting removes the social pressure to vote on Election Day. The average American in Florida, Texas, and other early voting states would be fine in getting their lives back without robocalls and other efforts to urge them to vote early. The vast majority of early voters would otherwise vote on Election Day, and having both sides spend millions to move those ballots a week or so early is wasteful. There were no lines in many polling precincts on Tuesday, which detracts from the experience and could result in fewer people voting next time. Early voting undermines the patriotic value of a unified Election Day. Also, early voters had less information, including major economic data that was not released until literally hours and sometimes days before Election Day. In some states, such as Montana, the Libertarian candidate for Senate pulled out of the race and endorsed his Republican opponent after many votes had already been cast early. California's mail-in ballot means that election outcomes can remain uncertain until long after Election Day when ballots are finally received in the mail by election officials. It becomes impossible to check against voter fraud, and there is no place for precinct monitors. Nevada is a state where elections are decided by early voting, and it had a tight Senate race for a seat held by a Republican. Yet ballots had already been cast by 40% of active voters there prior to Election Day, and Democrats easily defeated Republicans in early balloting. Republicans have controlled the Florida and Texas state houses and governorships for years, so it's baffling why they allow pervasive early voting there, including Sunday voting in Florida, which Democrats exploited. Other Republican states, such as Ohio and North Carolina, have sensibly tried to rein in rampant early voting. There is a constitutional right to vote, but there is no constitutional right to vote early, and it is time to restore integrity and significance to Election Day by reining in early voting. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Do you like what you see at the Trump White House? Will President Trump continue to advance conservative ideals? At phyllisschlafly.com, you gain complete access to Phyllis Schlafly Eagles news updates and commentaries and can track our work on Capitol Hill. Go online often to phyllisschlafly.com. And thanks for listening to the Phyllis Schlafly Report. Backwards. 800 uh, The Dow's down 750 points right now. Again, all eyes. And I know they're going to try to distract you. Pay attention to crude oil. Down 250 uh, $50 
and forty three cents on crude. If crude doesn't hold fifty, we, we we may break a record. It's possible that we would break a record today. And I think what was a thousand points down in the day. Uh, that is going to be one of the major indicators. Uh, GDP now forecast coming. Everything's coming way, way down. Uh, today, J.P. Morgan uh, was out with their predictions on gold demand, talking about 2019 and 2020. And they weren't talking about gold demand from you and I. They wanted to talk gold demand for central banks. As most of us know, because you've listened to me over the years, central banks hold a portion of their reserves in gold. This was a practice that went back to when central banks actually used to have to have gold on hand, right? Because the money was gold. And now they're saying that since they don't need it, why are banks still holding it? And then J.P. Morgan went a step further and said, why are they adding to it? Today's central banks hold gold as a hedge against fiat money. Now remember, I tell you the story. I I kept you in the know. Central banks have been net sellers of gold for as long as I can remember. Right Since we went full fiat in 1971, central banks were sellers all through the 90s, all the way up till about 05. The European Union, the Euro, before it was even the the Euro, had an agreement among its central banks that they would sell 500 metric tons a year. A year. So listen, if Germany said, hey, we're selling 200, that meant the rest of them could only sell three, right? They wanted they wanted to at least try to keep the illusion of of price. Today, J.P. Morgan says central banks are doing the exact opposite, right? We've been on this, right? Whether they're bringing gold home, they are now buying gold hand over fist. Remember why they're buying it. And remember, I've been, I've been asking the question all year, why are they bringing all this gold home? Right? Think about it. The gold that was in New York or London, it's been there for like 100 years. Why now? Why would countries like Poland start buying gold? The Netherlands start buying Hungary start buying gold. And everybody else, all these other countries, start buying gold. Right? We know the story. Oh, well, the Russians are doing it because they want to avoid U.S. sanctions or all this. No, not not really. Not like this. The Chinese, right, again, think about how they operate. Do you think they're just going to come out and tell us what they're doing? Right? They pretend, hey, well, we, we tell you how much we got. It's, it hasn't changed, but we're, we're the largest importer of gold in the world. Today, J.P. Morgan says central banks own 20% of all the gold ever mined, 33,000 metric tons. They say that central banks are adding 650. 50 metric tons a year, and there's no let up in sight. So think about in 20 years, no one bought any gold. I don't remember a single bank buying any gold. 
Central banks, just the European ones, were selling 500 metric tons a year. Who knows what everybody else was doing? And now 20 years later, for no reason at all, they don't need to hold it. The money's not backed by gold. I mean, think about it. Why, why wouldn't they go out and buy stock or bonds? Buy anything. Why are they spending all this money buying gold? J.P. Morgan says, and this is what they said, gold is for the I don't know. And right now, there's lots of I don't know. They're worried about, well, I guess the money crazy printing central banks. The bull market and the stock market appears to be over. The Dow moves hundreds and now closing in on thousands of points in a single day. There's plenty of other reasons to be worried. The roughly 10 years of this raging bull market appears to be long in the tooth. The Fed has started raising interest rates. But you know what they said? It's what they're saying now. Before last week, Fed Reserve Chairman Jay Powell said rates were well below where they should be. Last week, he said now they're just below where they should be. That's a huge change, because that just means, like I told you, remember, if they're admitting that we're almost there, then we've already passed it. China. And the trade war continues to intensify. And, of course, you know, the the great feel-good meeting in Buenos Aires looks like it's over. Late cycle swings in market. And gold is steady as ever. I think about what the Dow's really done. And I know gold hasn't broken 1250 yet. I think it, it, it's getting... J.P. Morgan says, get ready. Kind of like everybody else. See, we wanted to believe. I get it. I want to believe, too. Right? We wanted to believe that we were different and everybody else was suffering, but not us. Getting ready to give it up. We'll talk about what's coming next when we return. 800-951-0592. Got a question for you. So what do you think you should do? Buy stock. You know they're so overvalued, right? Facebook, Netflix, Tesla. <laughs> right? I don't mean to laugh, but come on. They created an illusion. They, they, the bubble popped. They didn't want to own it, and they wanted to reinflate. Right? And you look at gold, and I know a lot of you out there, well, gold hasn't popped yet. That's when you want to buy. Right? You know that. Are you going to buy at the bottom or you're not? No, you're not. That's over <laughs> I guess if, you, if we would have known when the Bank of England was selling in 2000, in 1990, right, we would have bought then. But who knew? They said uh, the day of reckoning is closing in. We think the experiment is coming to an end. You can get some cheap gold while you still can. Gold is on sale. Silver's an even better deal. Right? We talk about silver all the time, right? So so here's what we've got. U.S. Silver Eagles. You need to get 2018. 
in 2019. The same price. Now, 2019, you don't get delivery until the uh, third week of, of January. They're 360 year old. If you want a case of Silver Eagles, nine grand. I've got U.S. twenty dollar liberties on sale today at thirteen twenty five. And when I get off the air, I'm gonna. I just got word we've got, and it's a great amount, a hundred and fifty. $10 liberties. I just got an email. $10 liberties. Uh, they're going to be six seventy-five dollars At $800-951-0592. There's only, the only thing that I see up today is gold. Silver's close. But gold's the only thing that I see that's up right now. It's up almost $6. $1,243. Uh, the Dow uh, has been down as much as over 700 points. Right now is down 630 points. Crude oil now down two and a half dollars, fifty thirty nine. Uh, if it breaks below fifty, uh, we could see an even bigger sell off. I don't know. That's just I don't know. This is what people are, are telling me. By the way, the Dow has been down as much as. 720 points. The jobs data that came out today wasn't great. Unemployment claims stayed high uh, above the 230,000 mark, which kind of seems with the new way they track things, that's kind of the uh, number where you don't want to get any higher than that. ADP said private sector job growth was only 179,000, uh, and again, they were looking for a number uh, much larger than that. Last month uh, was 200, and it was, October was revised down uh, to 225,000 jobs. Uh, that was out of ADP. Tomorrow, we get the, the government number. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, if, you, if we use ADP as kind of the guide, my guess is that number is also going to be on the light side. Uh, and just remember this. Right? They always usually predict. I haven't seen the number yet. I, I Don't be surprised if they say about like 190, because that seems like they what they say every month. Uh, but ADP came in light. The bigger news, obviously, no production cut deal reached by OPEC has crude oil uh, the cascading down. And then, of course, the arrest of the CFO of how may or how why uh, they, the giant telecom company, she, uh, the CFO, she was arrested in Canada on behalf of the United States. Uh, saying that they violated the, uh, the Iran sanctions, got everybody kind of freaked out, and so we'll, we'll kind of figure it out from there. I, I don't know. I don't have any other details, uh, but someone just you know, got arrested like on Monday, and I guess I don't know. I guess they kept it hush us or or what. Uh, but those are all the things driving the market trade deficit number. Uh, that was another bad one. That one came in much worse than expected, uh, and that just has uh, implications for GDP. And this was a fourth quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter number. Uh, the 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 forecast that I saw out of Atlanta was already down to 2.8, and usually they're on the high. Okay, there you go. They just updated. I was hoping it'd get done. Uh, now down to 2.7. So, based on their track history at two, four, two, three, first quarter GDP, I almost can guarantee you, is probably going to be under 2%. We're going to be right back uh, to where we were. The fear is, is are we going to go negative? Are we going to hit recession in 2019? Uh, that remains to be seen. Ten-year note has now fallen uh, down to 2.83. We have not had full inversion yet. It's 
started the week at above three. This is a huge, huge decline uh, in the debt market. Uh, something that we have not seen and not supposed to happen. And again, remember, they missed price debt to begin with, and they thought they could get away with it uh, without any repercussions, and it doesn't look like that's going to be happening. Uh, we'll keep watching, uh, but the 10-year note uh, still has not inverted with the two-year note. Remember, it's happened seven times. 800-951-0592. Again, I'll be in uh, Johnstown at the radio station Wednesday, Thursday, Friday uh, of next week, uh, possibly Saturday as well. Uh, may have a few more announcements while we're up there. We'll be doing the show. Uh, we're putting together a year-end show, the death of cash. I don't know what we'll call it yet, but we're going to... We're going to go through, we're going to give you everything. We're going to give you the laws. We're going to give you the Supreme Court cases that go with it. We're going to give you uh, the escalation. Of course, uh, I shared with you uh, the escalation of uh, what's happening here. And the bank flat out just said, hey, we just don't like you putting this much money in the bank. Well, cash, that is. Because they've said, I put hundreds of thousands of dollars in there and I and I we have. Yeah. But we do millions and millions of dollars of business. And uh again, you know, the the they want you to feel like you've committed a crime and and make these threats and fill out these reports and answer these questions and and uh we we've seen this before. I will tell you this, I believe the time clock has moved up significantly. You know, think about what J.P. Morgan said about the Fed. Up until a week ago, we were way below where we needed to be. Right now, we're pretty much, uh, obviously, look at what the markets are doing. A a again, there's trouble. And, and this is what I've been worried about. What happens when it slows down? What happened? Remember, the problem last time is no one could pay their debt. And it started where? It started in housing. It sales started to slow down. Where do you look at? Have you Just go online. You can't go online. Everywhere you see, it's everywhere. Housing bust in, in Seattle, in California. Uh, in New York, in Texas, in Colorado, everywhere. Prices falling everywhere. Now it's credit card. Well, first, you know, remember, I've been telling you, oh, well, it was just the bad credit people. Now it's what? Now it's spreading to better credit. Now the banks are starting to what? Nah, nah, no credit card for you. Closing accounts, denying access, all of those things, right? We've seen this before. Make sure you're ready. Uh, we got Silver Eagles. We got $10 Liberties at six seventy-five. Twenty dollars Liberties, thirteen and a quarter. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Take the radio news hour. One more show before the end of the week tomorrow.